Greetings, friends. This is Survival Doc. As you know, I believe that we should have growing some of our own food in a home garden as part of our survival plan so that we won't be dependent on commercially grown food and grocery stores. Well, this is my tiller. It's a very nice uh, tiller. It has a five horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine. The uh, wheels are powered. It has a reverse. It is a very heavy duty tiller. And uh, I can uh, break up a large patch of new ground with this tiller in very short order. And I was fortunate to find this tiller uh, at an estate sale for uh, I, I ended up barter, uh, um, bargaining with them and ended up getting it for about $125, uh, whereas this is actually about $900, possibly more, tiller. And it's a few years old, but it, it, it still works great. Well, my tiller is great as long as I have gasoline. And as a survivalist, I'm always looking at ways of doing things, say if we run out of our usual energy sources, such as gasoline. And uh, if we do find that gasoline is unobtainable, it will be a toss-up as to whether I spend my last gallon of gasoline in my tiller here, or if I use it in my motorcycle that gets 80 miles to a gallon. Of course, it will depend on the circumstances at the time. But um, as I said, I'm always looking for alternate ways of doing things. I have uh, bicycles uh, with a lot of uh, extra equipment for our bicycles in case uh, gasoline becomes unavailable and we have to have uh, ways of transportation that don't include gasoline. And I'm always looking for ways of doing things that require less energy or no energy. So when I go to estate sales, I'm always looking for things like this. This is um, an old gardening instrument. Uh, I know it's old because the wood was a uh, very bad condition and the, uh, the metal was all rusted. Rusted, I used the Formby's wood re re uh, finisher, treated the wood, and then I treated it with tongue oil. As far as the metal parts down here, these were very rusty. I smoothed these down with steel wool and then I primed it with a metal uh, rust, rusty metal primer and then I painted it green and I got this thing operating just about like it did when it was new. But this obviously requires no gasoline and it will obviously require a lot more work than my gasoline power tiller but if gasoline becomes unavailable, something like this could actually save me a lot of work. Now, I, this is not going to break up new ground at all. Uh, what I'll have to do if I need to break out new ground is I'll have to get the shovel out and turn the ground over. Obviously more work than my tiller. But then this will be useful in um, the final process of uh, breaking up the ground once it's been turned over with the shovel. And I've also found it very useful in the garden and this may have been what it was originally designed for, it's very useful to run between the rows uh, to weed your garden. Here's something else I found at an estate sale. I bought this thing for about two or three dollars and this is a, a, a plow. It's actually a plow piece. Uh, this piece actually went on a piece of farming equipment. But I bought it because I could got, get it for just a couple of dollars, and uh, I figured there's a, there certainly will be a way for me to uh, convert this into uh, a plow that I can use manually, uh, that I can push through the rows um, between the garden. But getting back to this, I'm not really sure what this was called. It's um, it's, it's made by Row Manufacturing Company in um, uh, Illinois. So it's an American-made item. 
back when uh, this was a great country and we used to make uh, things in this country. So I'm going to take it into my garden and uh, it's not time to break up new ground of course but uh, I'm going to take it in my garden and demonstrate how this can be used to uh, run between the rows of your garden to uh, like get rid of uh, weeds. I just discovered some very bad news. These are my bean plants and you can see they're ruined. They are um, something eight. Something eight, my bean plants. I know what it is because I've had this problem before. And um, these bean plants are, are ruined. These are not going to grow. I just planted these recently and they are ruined and here the guilty party left their evidence this is deer droppings left right here beside my bean plants and uh, I actually live in the city and you re really wouldn't think that a uh, deer would be a problem here but they are a problem here and these are my fruit trees and um, they are a big problem in, the, in that um, they eat uh, all of my, they'll eat all of my peaches and uh, living in the city, I actually live in a suburb um, near a city. Uh, living in a city, I can't shoot the deer legally, um, which would be nice because I could harvest them and uh, provide meat, but uh, I do have a crossbow and if we get into a survival situation where we need the meat and we need the fruit from our trees that the deer are eating then uh, if it comes down to between us and the deer the deer are going to end up in the pot and uh, what the crossbow will allow me to do of course is to harvest the deer without the usual noise of a rifle so that it will not alarm my neighbors too much. <laughs> As you can see my garden has suffered some neglect because I've been involved in some projects lately that have required my time and hasn't allowed me to spend as much time in my garden as I wanted to. This is actually a volunteer right here. That is a, uh, looks like a radish. I'm not, I'm going to leave that. As you can see, this thing works pretty darn well. People knew what they were doing when they made things like this back in those days. And because it was in such an ugly condition. I bought this for three dollars at an estate sale. This says Survival Doc reminding you be prepared or be prepared to be pleased.